with the Christmas season on the horizon, we speak to Johannes Lederach, the third generation of the Swiss confectionery business, who is making his mark on the company as it drives forward through the pandemic and looks to the future with optimism as the business progresses into 2022. So thank you very much indeed, Johannes, for joining us today for the interview regarding Lederach and the development of the company. And uh, obviously we're in challenging times still with regard to the pandemic, but it seems that Lederach has made strong progress despite these challenges. So can you talk me through how the business has coped with conditions in the past 18 months? Yes, I think the key word there is really despite because we have also been severely hit. Our sales were about 40% down in 2020 to 2019 um, here in Switzerland because we do not sell through wholesale but only through our own um, chocolate boutiques. So usually, this is a great strength, but uh, in this crisis of a pandemic, of very little uh, footfall in the street, this was, of course, then our, our weakness momentarily. So we had a big lack of tourists. We had a, had a lack of business people because of less uh, business travel and because of the home office policy, which led to a big decline in sales. It was interesting, though, that it was very different situations. So in regional chocolate boutiques, we even had the growth during the pandemic because people tended to be more at home. And of course, then in the big cities, the train stations, airport, there it was, it was a big challenge. But we tried to see the crisis as an opportunity so we could really strengthen e-commerce within this crisis. And we could even find um, more attractive locations for new chocolate boutiques. So we invested quite heavily in many um, new sites in Austria, in the UK, uh, in the United States. Uh, we've just opened Shanghai last week. And uh, of course, as you um, have heard, we also had the opportunity to take over these 34 stores of uh, the Godiva, former Godiva locations which we are now transforming into Lederach stores. So I think we will eventually look back at the crisis and says it was a big challenge, but it was also a blessing in disguise. For those, for, for those that may not be familiar with the, the brand, can you explain about some of its heritage for us? Thank you. Yeah, my grandfather started the company in 1962. He wanted to open his own chocolate shop, but he didn't get the funding from the banks. So instead he decided to do business to business. He sold semi-finished and finished products to his fellow confectioners and bakers and hotels. His breakthrough was actually the invention of the hollow truffle shell, which enabled chocolatiers all around the world to do the truffles, not by hand anymore, but by filling them more systematically, more efficiently, and also with more liquid fillings. So that was his breakthrough at the time. And then my father, he took over in 94, and he realized in the early 2000s that unfortunately our business to business customers or some of them were struggling because there's less and less um, individual chocolate shops, unfortunately. So he um, tried to pursue my grandfather's uh, dream by opening more boutiques, but he didn't do that organically, but he acquired Mercur, a chain of chocolate shops from the Valora Group here in Switzerland. Um, which enabled us to get great teams, to get great locations, and to become um, the largest chocolatier in Switzerland. In uh, 2012, there was another milestone when we started um, cocoa production ourselves, so that we can now source directly from the farmers and really have the whole value chain from the bean to the bar to the shops, so we say from bean to bar to you um, within our company so that the quality is not just about the product, but about all the ingredients and also about the um, um, consumer experience in our shops and online. On a personal note, as the third generation leading the business, uh, how much are you enjoying taking on that challenge and how much of a responsibility is it in taking on leadership of the business? Yes, that's always then a big challenge to be on the shoulders of these giants. And um, what has given me a hope and courage is when I realized that I do not have to um, replace uh, my father or to replace my grandfather, but, I, but that I can uh, much more complement 
um, them what they have done. So my father is still active as the president of the company. I am now the CEO. My brother is in charge of innovation and production. And of course, we have a great team of managers. So I try a lot to complement them with the skills that I have and the passions that I have and then give them room and responsibility for the skills and passions they have. And so together we can be a great team to now internationalize and, and, and um, uh, keep up the innovations and further digitize uh, the company. That's great stuff indeed. It sounds as if you have quite a lot on your plate with conditions as they are, but there's some interesting times ahead with regard to your expansion in America, particularly with the Godiva sites, as you mentioned there. How much of a difference is it going to make to the business having those facilities? It's a huge opportunity for us because we get great sites. We get um, great teams. I think that's maybe the most important factors. You know, with us, branding is really about the people who work with us. If they know chocolate, if they know their consumers, if they are passionate about our brands, I think that's much more important than any website or brochure that we can have in, uh, in marketing. And last but not least, these um, stores are already um, furnitured. So with relatively low investment, we were able to transform them into, into Lederach stores. And just coming back to the pandemic itself, uh, can you explain in your opinion how consumer behavior has changed in terms of their purchasing of, of chocolate and confectionery? Yeah, the COVID crisis has probably accelerated the, the digitization and the push towards e-commerce. However, I still believe in the hybrid um, customer and consumer that he or she wants to buy sometimes online and sometimes offline. And offline, it's really about the experience that we offer, you know. So, and this is really one of the advantages of a Lederach store that you can experience the Lederach quality with all your senses, that you can already see the product through the window, that you can smell you, the product when you enter the store, that you then can uh, listen to the, um, the, 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 the staff, how they explain and consult you what chocolate and which chocolate types are right for you, that you can even taste the chocolate within our stores and finally um, buy them and indulge at home. So I think there's really some pros to this offline world but of course we want to combine it now with the pros of the e-commerce world and the online world and these this is a very exciting project and very exciting times ahead but i believe that those um, channels will complement each other rather than competing with each other well, so uh, in terms of websites there have your online sales gone up quite dramatically as with many other businesses in the past 18 months Yes, they have indeed um, gone up um, quite significantly. Um, it has to do with uh, COVID. It has to do with the general acceleration. And it also differs from country to country. So in Switzerland, where we have um, close to 50 stores, we expect to see a lower share of online because there's more um, accessibility throughout the country. Whereas in the United States, um, we have... Um, a higher sales of e-com because there's um, less availability. For example, we don't plan to have physical presence in the Midwest, in the United States, but the, the tourists from Midwest who have discovered us on Fifth Avenue, for example, they will always want to repurchase the products then online, which will lead to a higher share of e-com um, in these um, bigger geographical markets. Very good. And you mentioned about opening up in China, in Shanghai as well. And I know that is a market that's developing very quickly over the past few years. How excited are you about reaching locations like that? In China, we even went the other way around. So we started with e-com only because we knew and supposed that um, this would be important for us. We have always been astonished how Chinese tourists had liked our products in Lucerne and Interlaken and other um, Swiss tourist cities. So we set up a small team of e-commerce specialists in Shanghai and we were encouraged with the sales at our e-commerce store and also on Tmall and the like. So now because of these figures, we decided to start our physical presence even earlier 
um, after one year of uh, e-commerce experience. How, can you explain how the COVID crisis has impacted on your manufacturing operations? Yeah, we're proud to uh, really have all our products Swiss made. In the past, we still had a plant in uh, Germany for our business to business products, but we have closed this plant and, and are really now focusing on our two plants in Switzerland to make everything uh, in Switzerland. We believe that the consumer of the premium chocolates all around the world appreciates that and is uh, willing and able to pay a premium price uh, for that. So it's very nice to be in an industry where um, Switzerland is not just the, the connotation of pricey and the high labor costs in terms of a, of a negative aspect, but that Switzerland is actually perceived as, as, as being an asset to the, to the brand. So we're very fortunate to be able to produce here in Switzerland. As to COVID, um, we have um, further tried to uh, streamline um, um, many aspects of our production but we remain uh, committed to a very artisanal approach um, of producing our products. If you look at our pralines, for example, they are decorated in a way that you cannot uh, use much machinery, but that it really needs our specialists who do still a lot by hand, and we're committed to, to keeping that so up. There and I get the sense that there's a real passion for innovation in terms of your products, so can you discuss uh, sort of how you're developing your latest ranges at the moment? Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. There's lots of uh, talk in the management um, uh, teaching, you know, about customer journey and about social media and omni-channel and all of that. And that's all um, good, of course, but we really must not forget the product, especially not in the chocolate industry, which I think is still the most important factor for for success. So my brother and I are really committed to keeping up the innovations. We try to have two major um, innovations uh, every year. The last two innovation slots have been a chocolate popcorn and uh, the chocolate tablets with um, a special Grand Cruise, um, high percentage chocolate. And uh, we're actually quite happy with both the latest um, innovations and look forward to the next um, big product innovation, which will take place um, end of September within our stores. We don't look so much in the, in the chocolate industry, but rather try and be inspired in, in other industries in terms of design, in terms of consumer experience, in terms of um, e-commerce digitization, in terms of also store concept and store design. And we try to learn from that and implement that into, into chocolate. If you take, for example, our signature product, the Frischoki, um, there um, basically the idea was to have the presentation of cheese in a big counter uh, transferred to chocolate. And this is how our Frischoki was born. So we're really looking to learn from other industries rather than our own industry. Yourself and uh, just casting your mind back to your own experiences with your family, uh, was it a case that you were involved from a very young age with the business or did it just evolve naturally over time? Yes, I literally grew up on top of the chocolate factory, a little bit like Charlie. Um, I, I lived there until I was 12. I was uh, with my grandfather in the kitchen, so very nice memories there with him. Then it, as a teenager, I could work already in production first and accounting and marketing and within our shops. So uh, when I had finished my business studies um, in St. Gallen, I really um, felt like working with Lederach and I didn't want to go uh, elsewhere. So I really got a lot of opportunities and a lot of responsibility at the relatively young age, which I um, think was a great experience. And I would, I would redo it again in the yeah. same way. I enjoy the most working with, uh, with people and trying to um, uh, transform um, sorrows into hope. That's one of the most fulfilling things for me. When you get into a situation and people are down or there's a conflict or, or they're confused and then to share information, to share ideas, to bring together different people within the company, to make the different countries learn from each other and then to see a solution evolving out of this discussion and um, uh, 
hope uh, being there again that this is one of the most fulfilling things for me uh, personally so uh, where next in the development of the company where do you see it going in the next few years because you're now in over 100 locations uh, yes after the um, godiva transformation there will we will be uh, at close to 140 stores and i think we, we, we will we will be able to grow further in the in the next years um we don't plan to um, um focus too much on growth and numbers and all of that but i always tell my team let's rather focus on improving innovations on improving consumer experience on improving um, e-commerce and all the digital challenges uh, and all the digital um, opportunities excuse me and then the success will follow and then automatically there will be a growth in sales and there will be um, probably also a growth in, in boutiques but this is not what what comes first in, in, in our thinking yes we're excited to be in the UK at the Regent Street and um, uh, at the Westfield Mall and we've also had a very nice start with our shopping shop at the at the Harrods um, since we're fairly young to this market we're uh, um, still um, assessing the situation and um, then making uh, the strategy after that but I absolutely see the potential for uh, for more stores in the future we have also just launched um, uh, the, a new online shop in um, in UK which will make us available in the in the whole country and um, so there's a bit less pressure then to to grow in terms of physical presence but i believe that more stores will will absolutely follow and um, in terms of your marketing and growing the brand uh, do you have a a specific philosophy in trying to reach out to people to try and build that brand awareness yes i would really like to um yet improve the our both our offline and our online experience I think in the online experience, we can learn from other industries in terms of integration with offline, in terms of personalization, in terms of um, click and collect and all these tools. So we can definitely improve there. But I also want to improve our um, offline experience. So at the moment, we're working on a new store concept. You know, we're, we're, we're always reassessing our, our stores also with specialists, what is good, what is bad in terms of design, but also in terms of retail um, um, uh, concepts. And uh, we hope to have um, um, a new pilot store um, soon and then to learn from that and then to also um, roll out a possible new concept um, in the upcoming years in the, in the existing stores because I think it's, it's dangerous only to focus on adding new stores because this will only add the brand in this new location. But we also want to make sure that we reinvest in our existing stores so that the experience um, um, improves for our consumers wherever we are. The, fact that, uh, the confectionery industry is looking a lot at reformulation of products um, in light of health concerns. Is this something that Ladderac has paid much uh, focus on and how you adapting your product range because of this yeah what is important for us is to have um, offers um, to the consumer who looks for vegan so we have uh, some vegan products and um, we are further working on expanding that um, we also uh, want to um, push more in the all natural um, area of our products in terms of sugar reduction, I think it, it will happen over time, but it is not our, our positioning. I think people who buy Lederach products want to indulge and uh, um, um, eat very consciously and live very consciously, but there are moments where they want to indulge and then they probably want to have a chocolate without, without any compromise. So really we focus on the, on the best possible um, indulgence and we believe that um, premium chocolatiers will even profit from the from the more health conscious um, living because people used to just eat quantities of um, uh, a chocolate uh, maybe with a mid market positioning and now they eat more consciously so the moments they treat themselves they aim for the best and that's where we want to position ourselves yes the ethical mo motive was maybe the most important one when we decided to really start from the very bean um, this makes now possible for us to visit all 
um, these cocoa farmers and cooperatives in the six countries where we source from. Um, we really want to have 100% um, traceability. We even had a nice cooperation in Costa Rica with the Swiss government, where we helped the farmers digitize the traceability really from the farmer um, to us, a concept which we can now roll out in other countries as well. Um, we pay our farmers on average a third um, or 33% in premium as compared to the, to the market price because we want to reward them for the good quality they give us and for the, for, for the long-term relationship and also for the fact that they have to go through a certificate a process in most of the countries. Um, usually it's Rainforest Alliance that we work together so that we can really make sure that there's, um, 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 that there's no abusive child labor involved and that there's also the, the sustainability standards of Rainforest Alliance that everybody adheres to. Uh, looking to the future from what you've explained previously, it sounds as if there is a, a good deal of optimism within, within the company, would you say? Yes, there's a big deal of optimism indeed, because we come from challenging times after years of growth and growth to have these, this um, 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 downfall of 40% is, of course, very difficult for everyone to cope with. But I'm very, very proud with uh, each employee at Lederach, how they have um, persevered and how they have tried to optimize, how they have tried to see opportunities rather than risks. And now that everything is coming back, that we're growing again, that we're growing in the new countries, that Switzerland is uh, recovering slowly but surely, I'm really proud of our employees. And this gives us a lot of optimism for the years to come.